Now, you would have heard also on Ben with Brecky this morning talking to the New South Wales Planning Minister, Paul Scully, about this plan for the federal government to force developers to make sure that new homes have adequate mobile phone coverage, which I couldn't believe wasn't the case already. Especially in an emergency, mobile phone coverage is just as important as the other basics like power and water. And when you're buying a new home or even renting one, you don't really test it out, do you? Because you expect that you will have mobile phone coverage. So we were thinking, what are some of the other things that we might be taking for granted or overlooking when searching for a new home? Things we should be thinking about for new developments and for existing developments. And for a lot of people in Western Sydney suburbs, one of the biggest issue is overheating homes because the dark roofs, the black tiles, and not a lot of tree coverage. Peter O'Malley is from Harris Partners Real Estate and he's on the line for us now. Peter, welcome to the show. Thanks, Deborah. Good afternoon. I was surprised by this. I just assumed that mobile phone coverage would be a given for new developments. Yeah, it certainly is not um, on the developer's uh, radar at the moment. I think what's really important in this debate, Deb, is if you push further costs onto the developers, you push the pricing of housing up further at a time when we need more developers bringing stock to the market. So I think any discussion around developers contributing to mobile phone reception needs to involve the telecommunication companies as well because at the end of the day they're the people that are going to profit from consumers using their mobile phones in in the property so coming from a property perspective I'm not a developer lover but I understand the challenges that developers face and to be frank I find this position from the government a little bit odd that they would now load developers with the responsibility of bringing mobile phone reception to consumers. That's critical infrastructure that's, uh, you know, that as I say, the telecommunications should be in on this discussion. Yeah, and you think that the cost of that should be borne by the telcos? Absolutely. Developers are going broke. Builders are going broke, sadly, across the country at the moment. How the government thinks it's going to sort the supply crisis issue that that we're facing uh, at the moment by making developers burden the cost of mobile phone towers is beyond me. It is an assumption you make, though. I mean, you know, if you're moving into a a suburb that's perhaps a a newly developed suburb, you don't necessarily think, I better get my phone out and see if I've got coverage. You just expect it'll be there. Yeah, look, on all things, uh, Deb, it's buyer beware. So um, you shouldn't make assumptions. Buyers do make assumptions. There's a lot to check when you are purchasing a property. And you're absolutely right. Checking the mobile phone coverage inside the home and outside the respective property is important. And if you are buying off the plan, there's a lot of things that you're taking a leap of faith with the developer in terms of what the what you're seeing and what you're being told on the brochure and the marketing from the developer or the real estate agent and the product that you get at the end of the day. And this is just but one issue that buyers need to be across. Yeah, and I mean, there are many of them. I know that you've, you've sort of sent me a list here of, of quite a few. You, one of them being who your neighbours are, which is an important thing to perhaps take a closer look at, and even things like the bus routes, the local rat runs, the the pub routes, and the impact, of course, if you're moving into an area where there's stadiums, of what it could mean on game day and, and the like. You've got to consider all these things. That's right, Deb. Where do the bins go? The Inner West Council here uh, in um, the Inner West has changed their policy around bins. They're picking them up every second week at the moment. That will work for some households. It won't work for others. Uh, that's a big consideration that buyers might not consider on the day they're bidding at the auction, um, but it becomes a, a real issue once they move in. And I've got a text here, which is an interesting point from Peter, who says the problem with mobile phone coverage is you've got areas where so many people are packed into the suburb that sometimes the phone infrastructure can't cater for everyone. It does cause dropouts. I guess that's the other thing too, whether or not the existing infrastructure can can deal with the population that's there. That's right, and that's overloading the infrastructure, of course, and that comes down to the planning, whether it's the local council that's approving a development or the state government approved development. It's up to them to make sure the critical infrastructure is not overloaded and is available. The developer is going to develop to the best of their abilities and try and make a profit at the other end. And as I say, if we keep loading critical infrastructure onto developers, they already make serious contributions to critical infrastructure. All that we will do is continue to push the price of housing up, which is the last thing we need in Sydney at the moment, as we all know. Yeah, and I talked about the 
the colour of the roof and, and tree coverage. The darker the roof, the less shade there is, the more heat the home absorbs. But the seasonal elements are something you've got to take in consideration as well. You know, you might be looking at a at a home or a property to rent or buy in winter. You've got to consider what it might be like in summer and vice versa. Oh, that's a big one. You go into a nice cool house in December and you say, geez, this is really nice in here, isn't it? We don't need the air conditioning on. And that's great in the summer months, but you get to winter and you're absolutely freezing and you need all the heaters, you know, essentially going 24-7, driving up your electricity bill. So, again, buyers need to know when they're out in the property market, it is buyer beware. There is only so much a developer and a real estate agent has to and will tell you. And there are many practical elements to a property that you've got to stress test yourself before you sign the contract. There's no point learning some of these things after you sign the contract because it's often too late. Yeah, absolutely correct. Good on you, Peter. Thanks for jumping on. Thanks, Deb. Peter O'Malley there. And, yeah, I mean, it is buyer beware, as he says, but I was surprised that mobile phone coverage was something that wasn't being factored into what should be provided as a given with the other basic services, with water, power, sewage and the like. In this day and age, ensuring that you can use your mobile phone and have decent internet coverage should be a given as well. And as Peter says, the question comes down to who's going to pay for it, and he's of the view that it should be up to the telcos, not the developers. But it's definitely a factor for you as the person living in the area. I guess at the end of the day, you don't care who's paid for it. You just want it to be a service that you get. And probably you as the buyer will end up paying for it too if the developers have got to bear the cost. But it's one that surprised me when I saw it this morning.